This is the Diamond DA426. For some, airplanes should be sexy. For others, fast. And for some, fun. Diamonds are for the practical among us. With more than 20 improvements over the DA42NG, the new DA426 is the ultimate in practicality. It's not blazingly fast, but you will get there surprisingly quick. It won't carry everything but the kitchen sink, although it'll do just fine with full fuel, two people, and bags. The inside isn't roomy, but the new seats are cool and comfortable. Nothing the airplane does is flashy, but everything it does, it does very well. When it comes time to sign the big check, this airplane prompts the head to drive the pen. Today, we're going inside the Diamond DA-426 to talk about everything you need to know about this fantastic aircraft. The interior of the DA-42 was designed with the pilot and passengers in mind and features a redesigned overhead environmental console and an ergonomically designed and climate controlled seats with variable lordosis support and an adjustable backrest. To those familiar with other Diamond products, the seats will be worth the cost. Describing a traditional Diamond seat as firm is being charitable. Hard is more accurate. Thanks to an awakening in the industry towards proper interior appointments, buyers have the options for seats that recline and have lumbar support. The cockpit panel perfectly captures the look of a modern trainer with the G1000 being the centerpiece. The cockpit riding and displays are all very high quality with the gauges having an option for showing reflections. There are also various luxurious and handmade upholstering options as well as great optional interior features such as built-in tablet mount provisions for the pilot and co-pilot. At night, the cockpit detail is also enhanced by individual lighting controls that can be adjusted for intensity in some cases. This gives the user full control over their preference of having full cockpit lighting or a more subtle lighting that allows you to enjoy the scenery outside. The spacious cockpit is more like that of a car than the cramped space in most light aircraft, but there are some flashy features you won't see on the motorway. The Garmin G1000 avionic system now features synthetic vision, an accurate three-dimensional picture of what the world looks like outside the cockpit. The autopilot has a system with sophisticated capabilities more usually seen on much bigger aircraft. Changing altitude and direction, or following an airport's restricted visibility instrument approach procedure, are but a knob twiddle away. If you want to fly using all these systems, the Twin Star does so with serene efficiency. And if you want to fly by hand, the Diamond will obediently follow your instructions with the sort of smooth and undramatic handling that passengers as well as pilots appreciate. The real story of the DA-426, however, is the engines. Diamond bet its future on diesel engine technology and it seems to be paying off. The Mercedes-Benz derived AE300, with its FADEC, is a highly promising technology that meshes beautifully with this airframe and gives the DA426 a maximum speed of 197 knots and a maximum cruise speed of 190 knots and a maximum range of 1,225 nautical miles or 2,270 kilometers. The plane can take off in 2,130 feet or 650 meters, has a maximum rate of climb of 1,114 feet or 340 meters per minute, a minimum landing distance of 2,122 feet or 647 meters, and a useful load of 1,276 pounds or 580 kilograms. Make a pro-con list and the benefits of the two 168 horsepower Austro AE300 diesel engines come into focus. On the pro side, the engines sip fuel. High speed cruise at 92% power burns about 16.5 gallons per hour total. Throttle back for more economy and the burn drops to about 10.5 gallons total. Oil changes are recommended every 100 hours as opposed to the usual 25 or 50 hours. 
and the FEDEC translates to Electronic Engine Diagnostics. According to John Armstrong, a Diamond sales representative, there have been no in-flight engine failures with more than 200,000 hours in service. The con list is shorter. The 168 horsepower engines utilize a cast iron block, so they're heavy. They're produced in Austria, so while the service and support network is coming together in the United States, it'll be harder to find someone to work on the Austro than it would be for a traditional engine. Another potential negative is the overhaul time, which now stands at 1,800 hours. The high-pressure fuel pump is also life-limited to 600 hours. Unquestionably, the biggest advantage of the engine is electronic control. It's impossible to grasp the scope of how much this changes the way you fly until you try it. From startup to shutdown, everything about operating these engines is different. Startup goes like this. Flip on the avionics master, wait for the Garmin G1000 to boot up. If the engine is cold, the globe plug indication will come on and you wait a second. If the engine is warm, it's ready immediately. Turn on the engine master switch and turn the key. Do the same on the other engine, that's it. And they start every time. There's no such thing as a hot start, a cold start, or a flooded start. Everything is a normal start. Power is controlled with two large throttles in the center console that are not unlike turbine condition levers. The run-up is equally easy. Simultaneously push and hold the two electronic engine control buttons and wait for the engines to automatically power up. Do a feather test and then spool down again. It takes around five seconds. In-flight engine management also is different. Concepts such as lean of peak, rich of peak, and the best throttle and RPM setting are gone. You pick which is primary, speed or fuel burn, and then set a percentage. Want to fly based on fuel burn? Climb, cruise, or descend, it doesn't matter. Just set the power percentage to get that number and leave it. If the speed is primary, pick the best altitude and go there. Engine shutdown is equally simple. Turn off the avionics master and flip the engine masters down. The props will windmill for a few cycles and then stop dead without a tooth rattling shake. Extrapolate that out to engine shutdowns in flight and you can see that safety is greatly increased in both training and emergency situations by the simplicity of the system. Shutting down an engine is done by flipping a switch. To start it again, Either slow down to 100 knots, flip on the master, and turn the key, or enter a dive above 125 knots and turn on the master. The first two steps of identify and verify still are important, but the engines feather automatically. If you're going to increase multi-engine safety, single engine performance must also be good, and in that regard, this airplane is a champ. At maximum gross weight, in standard conditions, it'll climb to about 12,000 feet or 3,657 meters. When the airplane is light or your bad luck strikes in the winter, it is certified to climb 18,000 feet or 5,486 meters on one engine. The base purchase price for a new DA-426 is around $869,000 before options and while the total fixed cost is roughly $100,000 to $130,000 per year, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $250 to $350. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.